on his idea yeah, down. This is my idea. To I match the targeted yes. audience. Yes, yes. He wants to run it the way he has thought about it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it, creativity is very important, but also most important is who are you creating for? For. Wow. Mm. Um, Faiz Ochiwewa, um, all the way in outside countries, you've heard from Richard. Richard is saying that it is important that we... The, 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 the creativity is important skill for a person to have. Do you agree with Richard Faizo? And also on that background, Faizo, how do we, you know, profit from the creativity in business if at all it is important as a skill? Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, to compliment Richard for how he looks. I mean, I can, you can see that creativity has made on some weight. Despite all of us who are losing weight during this conversation, of Richard is gaining weight, which is good to see that's a creative man. Excitingly, uh, I would say. Um, I totally agree with his notion on, uh, yes, creativity is necessary. It's not for him, but it's also, um, you know, something that we need uh, nurture in everyone. Uh, that's why we encourage our children at a young age to really try to practice different things, uh, test different experiences so that they can you know, uh, define themselves in the future whatever course they take in life be not just redundant, dependent on uh, you know, what they're told to do or what they must do, but also be supportive of our community. And I'm always fascinated with really contribute to changes that uh, we see in societies um, and you can see here um, in in Europe you find a lot of things done but not necessarily provided by authorities or governments but by individuals who find hardships in terms of uh, their day-to-day -day life and they think about solutions uh, to go through these hardships and those solutions then eventually become public necessities or public goods that everyone now needs to use. For example, you can, uh, if you walk around, you know, or if you move around, like just what you talked about at the beginning, the necessity of having a train. I woke up in the, in, in Holland this morning at 6.40 and uh, by 10, I'm in Belgium and I'm having a, a, you know, a congress here. So that, that, that thought of creativity to say, to, or you can call it also innovation uh, to make people's lives easier is really what the our, our country would need more of this kind of uh, you know input in our day-to-day -day life yeah you might richard you've had the man walk up in uh, <laughs> finland <laughs> you try the, the, try the, was that to make, to, to make me feel guilty <laughs> Because I'm the reason this show started yeah. late. Just from Muyenga to Bokoto. Yes, he has juggled so much traffic and yeah. a lot of things have happened. But you see, Richard, that's why we're saying if there's a creative way of thinking about yeah. stuff, yeah. would be able to save and there'll be a lot more success. And sure. that really, really um, resonates with our topic today. Uh, Richard, mm. what jobs are in the creative industry? We're starting to build these things about you know, our discussion today. What jobs do you think are available? You're already earning out of it. <laughs> the creative industry. Yes. Uh, first, um, it, 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 it is so wide. Yeah. yeah. People look at the creative industry. When you say creative industry, they think about the, 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 the creative performance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you see, those aside, you know, we have people behind the scenes, you know, uh, the producers, the guys who do the technical work. Uh, and then the creative industry does not just carry the, 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 the artistically creative or the performing artists. Yeah. You know, we are living in a time where, you know, um, life has changed. The phone, the phone is now a performing space. Yeah. The internet is a performing space. So, yeah. you, you know, you're holding your phone and you have uh, a multitude of stages here. Yeah. You're free to choose. You know, Which the one? people who create all those spaces yeah. uh, are also creatives. They are, they, are, they, are, they are at a very different plane of creativity also. Yeah. yeah? Um, but, you know, all creatives are important. Yeah. I, uh, personally, I think to a certain extent, we are important in equal measure. Yeah. Because 
uh, Mr. Eddie Okila is going to have a platform here yeah. that is, 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 is so different from other platforms. Yeah. And the reason he shaped it that way is to serve a certain, you know, um, uh, 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 segment of audience, yeah. uh, TV viewing content uh, seeking audiences. Yeah. But Okila will need uh, the performers yes. on. Yeah. Okila will be the producer. The performers will be there. The writers are going to get jobs. Um, that's um, uh, that's why sometimes me in Uganda here, um, like the, the 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 only way we can have as many creatives incorporated into the creative industry yeah. is for those who can create to focus on churning out the art. Yeah. The more art you put out, yeah. the more people. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you pull into the value adding chain yes. yeah of the of the final products wow I, that i have experienced along the way when we seek to grow mm. you create more yeah. and you realize along the way we have you know brought in uh, this big number yeah. of contributors yeah. to the final product wow mm. Well, um, uh, Richard and Faizo, this is a very interesting part of mm. the show. The jobs that the creative unit would have. I want to dive to Faizo in Belgium. Faizo, you've heard from Richard. What jobs do you think we have available in the creative industry? Um, um, I, I think, um, you know, as Richard said at the beginning, the creative industry is really huge. Uh, when we start mentioning the sectors within I would call them, some, some are sectors because they are informal, others are industries because they are formal, uh, but there are also those formal and informal industries within the creative industry or the creative arts or the creative uh, behavior, I would say. Um, but the kind of jobs, let's start with, you know, you know what we are doing, so we are in the, in the arts, uh, I'm a programmer and that whole line of business you are familiar with. Uh, Richard is in the, you know, in theater and comedy and uh, you know that cha that chain of command that chain of business is very familiar to us we know what they are doing and i think maybe what is different in this case is like the idea the the acknowledgement of the actual um number of people or number of jobs that are associated in this in our line of work when people see richard uh, performing at the national theater or at the at the comedy uh, comedy scene when they do it their grand shows every month people don't really understand the amount of work that is put in live around the cre uh, the the creative process of writing the skits they do but also the back side the backstage side we are look we are talking about costume designers we are talking about uh, set designers we are talking about you know uh, makeup artists we are talking about uh, uh, communications person ticketing persons we are talking about uh, advertising radio interviews uh, you know tv interviews and all all these uh, jobs and when you look at the people and the amount of effort as well as the amount of to this kind of work it's appalling and then these are some of the things that we know but then when we shift to with art forms like new media when we talk about new media we're talking about you know design graphics you know we are talking about uh, advertising we are talking about um uh, software development we are talking about uh, programming we are talking about all these things so when someone sees like eddie uh you're here hosting us i'm you in Kampala, and we're talking to each other. They don't imagine the amount of work that was put all the us talking to each other live in such a diverse space. So this this is creativity. This is programming. This is thinking. This is offering a solution to as a to a need that is identified. Maybe not on a daily need, but it's almost something that you need once in a while. So. There are so many jobs, they cannot be counted. But what I want to assure the, uh, our listeners or our viewers is that we have, as within the creative industry, the highest number of employment opportunities. There are so many that need our services uh, in terms of when we get it to work. And there are also those that so many people that we need to make sure that we pull off our events. When I have Baimba Festival, as, is, as, a, as a small example of what, uh, what happens within our day-to-day -day life, I have at least 1,500 staff working at one festival. 
Those include my core staff, they include service providers, they include the volunteers, they include interns, they include, you know, partners, sponsors, and all these people are at the festival making sure that everything goes on as it is planned. So I cannot start mentioning how many jobs are there, but to be sure, they are very, very many. Wow. Well, you've heard it from Pfizer. Thank you very much, Pfizer. Richard, I want to come back to yes. you on this part. And of course, um, uh, you know, welcoming all the viewers from everyone who is watching the show. Mm -hmm. We are live on Facebook, on YouTube, and all across the world in all our platforms. By the way, we are live on our, uh, you know, you know, you, you know, www.houseoftalentuganda.ug.com. It's live, it's streaming for everyone across the world, so please enjoy. We want to hear your comments, kisses, and this is coming. Uh, we love to hear them. <laughs> we love to hear them. If you want, if you're doing well, kiss us. If you think we're doing bad, <laughs> yeah. kiss us. We are okay. We are creative people. We, we, we take this. Richard, yes. you've heard what uh, Faisal just said, and I like mm. the first two questions and three questions. I want to mm. go to the third question, which is, um, mm. what are the types of creativity that we can profit from you know we're talking about creativity and we're always talking about creative people Pfizer mm. just said something very interesting 1500 people worked at the concert I mean yes. a festival whenever we see you on stage uh, we don't understand that the fun factory has got a shipload of people behind just Richard for Richard to look good on on, on, on screen yeah. and to be you know looking nice and to speak whatever is speaking nice on the on stage yes. there are a lot of people behind there mm -hmm. so I want to just ask you a question what type of creativity is there for businesses to honest given your experience as a stage performer mm -hmm. as a copywriter mm -hmm. which yes. means you're writing a lot of yeah. uh, copies to yeah. corporate yeah. companies for yeah. products to be communicated about True. to be consumed True. what do you think uh you the types of creativity that is there that we can profit from as businesses yes yeah um, as individuals as well as businesses okay. yes, yes yes um uh, you, you just mentioned some of the most important ones there yes. yeah you know first the, the, just the creativity to produce um, you know, art that can just, you know, touch people, uh, people's hearts and lift their moods and uh, maybe also help them think, um, you know, in, in certain thought processes that they wouldn't have if they had not consumed yeah. certain pieces of art. That, that creativity is very important. That, that, that one um, uh, is, is that, I think that is the longest, uh, serving kind of creativity yeah, for <laughs> humankind eh? because yes, yes. i mean since 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 the medieval times yes. um that kind of cre creativity is demanded for yeah. for leisure um now creativity for business development yes. creativity for business development where yeah. some some of these um their talents that can be applied yeah. in all those places yeah. um now okay we have people like me who uh applied their talents in places in, in spaces like copywriting yeah, yeah? Um, where you use your um, creativity to nail a message yeah. or speak to a company's potential customer yeah. and also speak to the one they have yeah. so that you know they, you it, you need that creativity between you the brand owner yeah. and the brand consumer yeah. you need some creativity there yeah. to 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 keep these people emotionally connected to your product wow yeah sometimes you are, you might be good enough at designing the product yeah yeah but you're not as good enough at gaining yeah. and, uh, and maintaining the confidence yeah. and emotional connect to your product yeah that is when you need people who can you know pick that creativity off the stage apply it in this business space also yeah. um the creativity of you see the world has become so visual yeah the world is so so visual that if you have a message and you do not design it in in, in maybe typography you know you, you're not going to <laughs> <laughs> you have to apply yeah. some typography yeah. Yeah. so you know um and creativity has has really to me we are living in a time where creatives have to be very awake to the fact okay. that 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 the, the the audiences that we are creating for yeah. are exposing themselves yes. sometimes much more than we the creatives yes, yes. and they are also becoming creative themselves yes. in their own right yes. Yes. so they attain a higher level of judgment yes. of your art yes. that if you do not expose yourself better yes. eh, or more than they are exposing themselves yes. wow the audience will 
<laughs> we'll run away. It will be three, yes, four yes. steps ahead of you. Yes. And by the time you wake up to chase this audience and yes. get it. Wow. Yeah. It's not that you're not creative anymore. Yeah. They have exposed themselves so. much more. And now, so creatives have to be on their toes wow. because our, our audiences are becoming more creative. Too. Wow. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Faisal, <laughs> we want to dive to you in Belgium. You've had, I think... Um, Richard just said something fundamental to understanding. If a business person is watching, they need to understand where Richard is coming from. If um, a creative person is watching, they need to understand that if you're not constantly putting your craft together, mm -hmm. that, that, that audience that you're creating mm -hmm. that product for is yeah. going to come for you. And mm -hmm. once they get exposed, mm -hmm. they might age you out, not because you're not doing something right, but because they're already exposed to a manner in which they can judge the product and know what is good and what is not. Just before we go for a break, Faisal, your thoughts on that one. You know, what type of creativity do we have in theater and performing art as well as, uh, you know, from a programming point of view as a guy who is always doing stuff for, uh, you know, entertainment. Whenever we are stressed, we run to you and you guys give us relief. Faisal, over to you. Yeah, you know, um, it's very interesting. And I, and I think as Richard says, that one of the things that we, we strive for as programmers is always the consistency and also understanding our audience. Um, like the Fun Factory guys really mastered the audience. I think they have never really failed to fill a space, whatever big or small they, uh, they occupy, because they know who their people are and what they want and how to keep them at the edge. I think it's, it's the whole mystery around building audiences. How do you keep your people to they come to you? They, don't, they are never bored. Speaking for Baimba, we've always developed... Um, I don't know what we call it. we call it the experiencing audience our audience is very exper experiencing uh they always want to see something new i think from the beginning we've always challenged ourselves and challenged our audiences to bring in um a new feeling of an, a new art form that's why we managed to introduce new art forms that were not really much on the market like video mapping street theater uh, we did things like uh, headphone disco. I, I don't know whether you you know that. We know when we started it in two thousand nine, uh, and people always want to see what's new this time at Bainba. And when that drifts away, that you are not able to 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 do the more, then your audience starts wondering what's going on. They they start finding or trying to find other opportunities or other options. That's why they run away to other events. But at the same time, it might be also a good thing for you. For example, our 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 course in programming by Imba has always been about the experiencing audience. But at the same time, we forgot about ourselves. Then we took off some some two years of reinventing our programming, and then the audience was confused. And I didn't blame them, but it was intended to go, to kind of create this kind of tension between okay, where do we go? Is it is it still the same by Imba? But they don't know what's coming up for them. And I'm curious how they react when the new Bayimba comes back. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Faisal. Um, you don't know how the... Uh, somebody just sent a message and says, you don't know how important this program is to me right now. I'm learning something that Richard has just said has tickled somebody. And he said, you don't know how much I've just picked from Richard in that mm. small space. I've always seen him on stage just making us <laughs> laugh. I didn't know the man can speak too much sense. <laughs> I don't know whether to take that as a compliment. <laughs> I think we should take that as a compliment. You see, Richard, we're going to take a break, but when you come back, okay. we're going to start from that particular point okay. of where yeah. people just uh, see you mm -hmm. on stage and assume that this is the sum total of the person. And they never know that this person is there's more to this person. Well, the creative industry is going for a break. And when we come back, Richard Chuanje and of course Faizo Chiwewa, all the way in Belgium, will be giving us a lot bit more about the differences between you know the the creativity and innovation. These two words are always you know confused. Mm -hmm. And uh, you stay right there, pick a coffee, and when we come back, we want to hear your kisses and disses. If you have some kisses, if you don't have, you know, you know, disses, whatever it is, we're okay. The Creative Minutes Talk will be right back after the break.
welcome back from that break. This is Creative Industry Talk, where we sit and discuss things that affect the industry where we are. It's a platform that exists for everyone in the creative space to think. It's a platform that we come together to share ideas. It's a platform that we believe can bring together the creators and, of course, the policy makers on the round table to think and to come up with, you know, very... Uh, integrative mind maps that allows us to take the industry and the development around our country and our individual projects forward. Of course, Richard, welcome back to the show. And of course, uh, Faizo Chiwewa, all the way in Belgium. We are missing, uh, you know, Jeremy Biemanzi from the advertising sector. We would have had a fantastic moment with him right there. And we hope that uh, Jeremy will be here next week. We think that this series of having Richard and Jeremy coming in and Faisal will run for the next two weeks. So if you're missing this one, Richard will be back next week. <laughs> but we want to hear from you. I'll start by a comment from uh, yes. one Frank Tugume mm. says, I'm always glad to be here. Oh. And uh, a shout out to Richard on the show and as well Faisal. And he well, says, uh, I, I don't know how you guys are doing it, but uh, Facebook is off in Uganda, but the show is on. <laughs> And Pfizer just we are not in Uganda. Tips, yes. <laughs> just gave him a tip on that one of what is going on. Well, Richard, welcome back to the program. I want to take you straight to... There is this, um, you mm. know, thinking Ugandans usually have, or generally, you know, uh, you know people yeah. always think that they see you on stage and they form an opinion about you. <laughs> yeah. And most times, because we are no longer learning that people don't have <laughs> around uh, people. But what's yeah. your thought on that one? <laughs> how, how do we help yeah. people to start seeing that we're actually more serious people mm. than they think we are? Uh, you know, um, first, I think, I think the, the, the people who have that kind of mindset, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the mind is a very funny place. <laughs> <laughs> what you expose... Yes. Is what you know they take yeah. and they expound on that. Yes, you know yeah. it does. It, it will never end on the stage. Yeah. So they see Richard acting a school child. They see Richard acting a, a headmaster. Then tomorrow the other show you are a drunkard. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, you know they can they, they put you in there. They paint a picture yes. of who Richard is. Yes, yeah, off the stage. Yes, and uh, that picture will never be very far from the picture they see here because you have given them the first brick to build their yes. image of you. Yes. So, <laughs> so yes. me, uh, personally, if I tell you my experiences uh, as, as an artist and a creative who applies my creativity in different spaces because I do professional emceeing yes, yeah. uh, for events of, of different uh, sizes and shapes. Yes. But I know the people who tell me when, when I get a gig, for example, yeah. they tell me, ah, you know, it was a process uh, getting zero, zeroing down, down to, you, to you to you as because a person, the yes. bosses were like... Wanted this person here. Yeah, yeah. And, and we told them, this, no, this, this is gentleman is will fit nail it the way we want yes, it. Yes. And it's like, but this guy, man, the, the kind of comedy he does, will he handle this very competitive <laughs> event? And we see him, how about, yes, yes, yes. like, they, they throw around lines like, yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This kind yes. of event. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because, yes. um, uh, because you see, certain events I handle have, have yes. the multinational, yes. the audiences are not just Uganda. Uganda. Uh, yes. You know, um, and uh, that goes down. It, it brings another issue, yeah. and all of us artists and creatives in Uganda have been uh, victims of our own uh, um, um, creativity. It, that is one, but also not working on our personal brands. Okay. It's just recently that we started working on our personal <laughs> brands uh, with the help of social media. Yeah. You know, people get to know the Richard Tuanje, yeah. separated from the actor, the comedian, the entertainer. Uh, so, um, I think it's, it's now, you need to work on your personal brand. Yeah. That is a given. Mm -hmm. There are no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. Especially if your money, you, you, especially if you want to start earning while you're not performing. Yes. Because we are in a time where man, you need to earn while you're not performing. Because we've tested months where yeah. now there's no performance. Yes, one and a half years where... Mm. And believe me, you, yes, yes. the talents in this city... Yeah who have worked on their personal brands and their personal brands speak for, for uh, uh, their personal brands 
uh, work up a value for them, yeah. they still somehow survive. Yeah. Uh, compared to those whose uh, brand they know is just on stage. Yeah. Uh, 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 on stage presence. Because then you limit yourself to a, a talent that only earns per performance. Yeah. And if you get that and expound on it, build a personal brand, apply your talents elsewhere, yeah. or even learn, because a lot of people have talents in this city, yeah. but they don't skill the talent. Yes. That's, that's, that's another thing. Then also, separating the, the talent from his personality, yeah. also in our audience, because we can never not think about the audience. Yeah. The audience... It's where the money is, it's, it's where it's, the business yes. is. That's where things come from, it's your product. Yes, yes. In, 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 in better societies, yes. They, they know how to tell apart the talent and yes. the personality yes. is because the audiences also have a high understanding now of the arts. Okay. Here. Yeah. It's different. Here is different. The audience is still in its infancy on that point. Yes. We are still pulling them up yes. to consider the arts a legitimate source of livelihood. Okay and revenue yes wow mm. uh, as a matter of fact another one has come here and says i like what richard is saying um this is now giving us an insight into who he is <laughs> and what this is about uh thank you very much richard you've changed my opinion of you on this show i was wondering how you're going to discuss this topic which seems to be a little bit more of a corporate side of things <laughs> uh, than <laughs> are you serious <laughs> Faisal Chihuahua, we want to dive to you. They see you with your backpack ah, you know. moving. <laughs> they don't know you are a person who creates serious stuff. Right now you are in Belgium while others are in lockdown <laughs> in Uganda. Yeah. How are you doing it? It's Faisal. the perfect example. By the way. <laughs> Faisal, over to you. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I was just laughing about uh, uh, the comment on, on Richard because I find it fascinating. And of course, I mean, you don't... Uh, um, uh, our our followers or fans because for them as richard explained uh, they don't have maybe the opportunity to explore the personality of richard off stage but they often on stage and also on skits on on social media that's what they carry and uh, yeah it's not different from all of us i mean uh, even for you don't expect you to be uh, or lifting heavy lifts in the, in the gym early in the morning. So this is what what happens. Like when people don't really tend to have an, a deeper thought about an individual. But um, I think I mean if, if for me I wouldn't really I don't have a definition of my private or personal or, uh, work life. It's kind of very intertwined, uh, and of course I try to keep as much distance, keep the mystery uh, of me. Uh, I, I tend to be very much distanced from people, but I love crowds as well. So, and also maybe the other thing that you you guys don't know, I'm very crowd phobic. So when there are too many people, I freak out. So I tend to be <laughs> always hiding in the corner. Um, that's why I'm always tending to be backstage when we have festivals because I'm, I freak out when I see too many people or between too many people. Um, but yeah, that's that's a personality. Um, uh, it's something we work on. Uh, but I think being um, what people expect of you, um, it's really difficult sometimes if you, you don't person and uh, you just see them and give them a, uh, form your own opinion. And best you know, you know or hear, or, um, which I tend to ignore the time. I think it's also good as you're building the brand of yourself to not to always be distracted by what you hear or know or hear uh, or feel that people are, are saying or understanding of you but it's on your line of work and that's why for me i that's what i tend to do most of the time that's so true well thank you so much Pfizer, for that one richard you've heard from Pfizer yeah. for a man who organized festivals is uh, <laughs> is crowdphobic i don't know yeah. that <laughs> I think it was his way of uh, psychologically fighting back the yeah, phobia. The, the phobia. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, thank you very much, everybody who so far sent in their comments. And I, I don't know why you guys are always sending WhatsApp messages or Facebook messages. I, I want you guys to comment on the show straight live there and then. Send us your kisses and this is where very much welcoming them. Richard, yes, I think you can see where we're coming from. The topic today 
is about creativity for business success. And I think yeah. you have already tackled a little bit of it that the creativity, the things we have talked about right now is something that people need to start thinking about. Mm -hmm. But I want to take you straight to my next question, which is, what is the difference between creativity and innovation, given the background of people's opinion about who Richard is, about who Faisal is, about who Okila is, about who any other you know, creative mind is? I bring the question to mind, what is the difference between creativity and innovation? Because I think sometimes we mix this thing, and you've said it in a very nice way. You say mm -hmm. that as, as, as creative people, we, we, we were doing a disservice to ourselves. We are being one and the same on stage. Yes, yes, and yet we are supposed to be completely different. Mm -hmm. On television, where I am more comfortable, they, they say that the character on television is really different from the character you're going to meet on the street. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you take the person on television to be the person you're going to meet on the street, mm -hmm. you're going to be really shocked. Yeah, and so true. is on the radio. Um, yes. But, I mean, dive into it. What is the difference between creativity and innovation when we're talking about success brought about by creativity in business? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky <laughs> question. But if you asked me to put it in one sentence, yes. I'd say all innovation yes. Eh, yes. is creativity. Okay. But not all creativity is innovative. Yes. Uh -huh. Now you see that is where it becomes yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> yes, you need to expound on that yeah, because there's a great yeah. line in between there. Because yeah. yes, you you need a creative mind behind every innovation. Yeah, yeah, there has to be. I think they are cousins. They are half brothers. Yeah, hmm? same father, different mother. Yeah, because innovation will be mothered by the need yeah. to fill a gap. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, while creativity can keep this new innovation. Yeah. Uh, running and growing yeah. in itself as an innovation, yeah. yeah? You, you, because you innovate. The moment you innovate, this is an innovation. This, yeah. this year, yeah. <laughs> this year, what you did because I've been following. Yeah, it's, it's an innovation and it is going to grow. Yeah. You can tell something that is going to grow. Yeah, HTV uh, is an innovation. Yeah, but it needs constant refreshment yeah. of create or on a creative angle. Yes, you know. Um, so I don't think you can say, you can really pull them apart. Yeah. They are they are together. Creativity is the oil that keeps yeah. running it. Yeah. Wow, wow! I mean, we're talking about um, creativity for business success in Uganda. It's a part that people don't understand very well. It's a part that either the corporates don't understand very well or the consumers of the products that are in the market don't understand very well. And the typical point 